Welcome everyone to Already Cancelled. I am Peter, that is Tara, and we talk about TV shows here. The year is 2020, and the name of the show is Babylon 5. <laughs> Season 1, episode 11. I don't know how it smoothly came out of that yet, because it's, it's such... I mean, I, I guess I could start doing the theme song like I usually do. I expect, yeah, well, that's the thing, like, in, in the show, when he does the intro, you expect the music to kick in. I don't know the music all that well yet. I was about, I kind of reckon, I vaguely reckon, up until now I've never recognised when you tried to do it, I vaguely recognised it at that time. Because I always try to do the backbeat part. That okay. Yes. It's not really the main theme. No. So this is season one, episode 11, it's called Survivors, and this is a Garibaldi-focused episode, in which a figure from his past is on the on the station, and there's an impending visit from the president who we never actually see that uh-huh. happens off off camera i'm sure that's something we might get to later uh but there was an assassination attempt or a failed assassination attempt on the president sort of in advance someone was trying to plant a bomb and it, it goes boom but garibaldi is implicated uh by this person who was sort of injured in the in the explosion and suddenly this uh basically the head of secret service i mean it's not they don't call it that but that's essentially what it is uh you know has a history with garibaldi and she kind of has it out for him so immediately goes all witch hunt on him and that's kind of the premise of the episode uh so what did you think of this one i i thought it was all right i'm getting a little tired of the whole every person who comes on board is linked to our (laughs) <laughs> main crew people somehow it's a bit, but Garibaldi hasn't had his episode yet so that's that's true it's, it's a it's a bit of a, a trope at this point it's been pretty frequent um mm-hmm. and I, I guess that maybe because we are in that stage where there's so many characters to like give some backstory because it's not like, i mean because last episode didn't have that you know it was just like other just random people on the ship who had this thing with their kid um mm-hmm. so i mean they are mixing it up a, a bit but yeah it is a bit of a like we've had it for Sinclair, we've had it for Ivanova, uh, we had it with Talia, do we have anyone else yet? I'm sure, uh, yeah, we've Franklin, had Franklin had the arti- architect. That's right, you're right. teacher. Yeah. So yeah, it is kind of absurd, like, how quickly we've went through a bunch of people. I mean, it's fine spread out, obviously, but it has been yeah. very condensed. That's, that's a fair... I actually... I think this is an okay episode. I don't love it. And I think... I like some of the things that it does. And, mm-hmm. like any show that i really get into and kind of you know begin to love even the, the sort of weaker episodes have a lot of character moments that i appreciate and enjoy and i like what it does with some of those things um and i, I kind of dig garibaldi going all kind of rogue and he's like a, a fugitive and he's running around the station there's kind of some fun to be had there i didn't kill my wife <laughs> i don't care yes that's the movie um but <laughs> I did think, I, mean, I think the biggest problem with the episode is that the person from his past, uh, Major Liana Kemmer, henceforth just Kemmer, uh, she's kind of one though, and she's so, like, angry at him the second she's... Yeah, she's, she's got, like, constant forever scowl. Yeah, like, you expected this to be some woman that he had wronged. It actually turns out not to be the case. In fact, when he knew her, she was, like, a kid. This was, like, a long time ago, and... Uh, he yeah. worked with her father. We get a whole backstory. I'm really, really glad that they held back on the the perviness of Garibaldi for this story. <laughs> <laughs> that's yes, that's that's fair. Uh, and yeah, but I, I mean, it makes sense that he never even says anything like that because this is someone. This is a child to him. This is someone that he yeah. he knew when they were a kid, and he's much older. But uh, we get this backstory where he was working on Europa, and it's one of these things where. They've implied before, of course, they've alluded to his, like, sketchy, like, history where he's got, you know, his, his reputation as a, on the job is not that great. And this is one of these examples. It, he, he basically describes High Noon, where everyone was corrupt mm-hmm. on Europa except him. And because he tried to expose it, um, they, they tried to kill him, but they ended up killing uh, uh, Kenner's father instead. So she resents him for that, blames Garibaldi. And Garibaldi, you know, we get a bit more of his alcohol, alcoholism in this episode where, you know, he's, he says that, you know, he went to a bottle and and I actually kind of appreciate that he does take a drink in this episode. Mm-hmm. And it's not necessarily treated like, oh, that's him, like, like for episodes and episodes being drunk and it's going to be like a big plot line of getting out of it. They kind of treat it, no, no, he, he fell off the wagon. He's not happy yep. about it. And yeah. he had a really bad day. 
He had a very bad day. I mean, <laughs> in the beginning, he just orders water straight up, which is comical. But, you know, it wasn't until the end when he's bleeding and beaten and in some shady bar that he mm. says, you know what? All right. <laughs> I'll take that drink. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, the, I, I think the straight up bar is supposed to be a joke. It's supposed to be him having a sense of humor yeah i said it was funny <laughs> oh, okay okay uh credit where credit i need true. a drink water straight up no i, I think the, the best things in this episode come from the other main cast and what they do to help and or aid garibaldi those are the moments that i think are the best yeah, and working on the overall storyline about what's happening on earth right now the With president's home. coming yeah. to because coming to Babylon 5 as a show of good faith that Earth is still on the side of, you know, we want, we're not xenophobic, and he's coming to represent that. But then this other group is opposed to it, and so, yeah, they're... Yeah, Home Guard. So, I mean, it's the... Yeah, home right. Guard. Yeah, yeah. use the name again. If I, I think they even mentioned the presence about to, like, like usher Make a in, treaty. Yeah, like there's a new immigration laws or something like that that mm -hmm. are going to, you know, benefit uh, more like alien that the home guard are very 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 upset about yeah um that, what really episode fails like i say kenner's kind of one note and just angry all the time it does lead to a couple of funny moments when like ivanova kind of pokes fun yeah, at yeah she's her. the best in this episode yeah she's sure. pretty good um and jakar <laughs> I, I, I think her and then also her like like uh you know her main like guy like her, her number one like he is like so obviously going to be the villain by the end that it's just yeah. kind of like absurdly stupid. Like we even <laughs> pretend that he's not. It's that you know, it is that that, that part of us whatever. But right. Jakar's great. I love that the first time we see Jakar in this episode is that like Garibaldi's like really upset because he's just seen Kenner for the first time and he's like looking for a fight out in the main sort of like you know deck and like Sinclair's trying to get to him to calm him down and Jakar just comes up and he's like have you seen the seating arrangements for this presidential <laughs> thing I, you've put us next to these alien race this is, this is an outrage <laughs> he's just... yeah he's upset because apparently they eat really gross <laughs> I love it so much um, but... but you think it was like yeah if someone just gave away the home world or something he was so upset no don't give away the home world never give away the home world <laughs> this is important <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, he broke the cardinal rule. Yeah, I no, I, I think the scene where he goes to Londo is really good because how you know Londo and Garibaldi way back in the first couple of episodes had a bit of a bond and we've not really addressed it too much recently. But it was kind of nice to see the opposite way around where it was Lon uh, it was, sorry it was Gar Garibaldi needing help and asking for like a loan to like help you know because because Garibaldi even goes to the the black market uh, mantis alien thing. Our but, favorite character. But he won't give Garibaldi anything because he's still a cop at heart. And he's like, yeah. no, you don't trust you. Get out. Even though he's already turned in his badge and his gun. He has turned in his badge and his gun. That is something that indeed happens in this episode. <laughs> uh, but no, I mean, I think the Londo scene's really good because he's not like typical... Because Londo's not in a great mood. He's not, he's not like, you know, typical happy-go-lucky Londo. He's gambling. But he does actually soften up a little bit and kind of admits that he likes Garibaldi because he kind of sees mm -hmm. a lot of himself in Garibaldi and they're, they're both kind of like... I don't know, kind of the ones that people count out as being the losers. And yeah. I I also really like in this scene that we find out that the um, Centauri, excuse me. Yes, the Centauri. <laughs> the Centauri also have a patron state of gambling. <laughs> That's pretty good. I, I think it, it checks out. <laughs> I'd, I'd love to see a bit more of this side of Londo. When I say this side, I mean, when he talks about feeling like he's kind of a Garibaldi or he's been a Garibaldi-esque person the in the odd past man out. I, yeah i wonder like i, I would kind of love to see some other, other centauri kind of treat him that way and see like you know is this kind of what motivates him to be who he is and why he is the way he is kind of thing yeah i think we need to see more of that too i mean you can kind of get the sense that from the earlier episodes that the centauri are not used to be on top and they definitely are not anymore mm -hmm. and they've already accepted that but i'd like to see if this means that that Londo himself has some backstory where maybe he's been put here as a punishment onto mm. Babylon 5. Like, it, away from the home world. Because we don't want you here. <laughs> yeah, and it's not just uh, a way to stay away from his three awful wives. Uh, yeah. Death, pestilence, and famine, or whatever they were called. <laughs> I think that's it, yeah. Yeah. Um, no, no I, I, it got me thinking about Jakar as well, because obviously Londo says, hey, maybe it was Jakar, so the Garibaldi goes to see Jakar. 
And right, uh, somebody has placed uh, Centauri credits in his account or something. Yeah. So uh, everyone thinks that now he's in, that he's been paid off by Centauri to make this bomb and kill this yeah. person. Uh, along with actual like you know trigger parts and like schematics mm -hmm. and stuff in his quarters. Yeah, it's pretty. Uh, pretty poorly planned yeah. of Garibaldi if he really did. <laughs> Which is the first thing he says. Like, why would I leave that in my own quarters? Come on yeah. now. Think about it. It's pretty sloppy. <laughs> but um, but I was thinking about Shakar in the same way. I was like, you know, well, what do other Narn think of Shakar? Like, I, I, it got me thinking about like our main ambassadors and like, wh who are they to the other people in their race and the, the mm -hmm. other people in their governments? Like, I, it's something that I, maybe we'll get over time, perhaps, as we expand upon some of that stuff. That'd be fascinating to see. Yeah, but, I don't doubt it. Uh, Jakar basically says, look, you know, we can have you on a Narn ship and take you to the Narn homeworld. In return, though, we're going to do some tests on you. You're going to, like, you know, give us a lot of valuable intel. Oh, yeah. Uh, the, <laughs> there's no such thing as a free lunch in the Narn universe. <laughs> no, apparently not. Uh, so Garibaldi tells him to shove it, uh, basically. Mm -hmm. and he wants to clear his name. And he kind of just fails miserably. He ends up at that bar, like we said. He ends up getting drunk. And he's he's very upset. He passes out. He gets caught almost immediately. I say passes out. He gets knocked out down. He, you know, so when he leaves the bar, he gets punched out. And they've got him. And it's not until in fact that what and this is obviously not a big character, but I kind of also liked uh, there's the, the one bald security guy who I think we've seen a couple of times who's in this episode. Who? Yeah, I think he's in like a movie or something that he like, looks first like he blood is. or something. That sounds, yeah, plausible. He's got that type of uh, presence. But he, uh, like, he, he, even he sort of steps in, because Garibaldi, when he's accused of things at his quarters, mm -hmm. he's almost about to throw a punch at, like, the, uh, the, the who turns out to be the bad guy. And this yeah, guy... Yeah, and this, like, extra it steps in and, like, steals the moment. Like, yeah, yeah, he <laughs> holds really good. Him, yeah, it's good, because he, he holds him back, and you get the sense that he's not holding him back because he's like siding with these other people he's like no no don't make this worse for yourself chief like you know he's doing yeah. it for him he, he cares about garibaldi we know you're gonna get your name cleared and come back just yeah. don't and we like you <laughs> yeah it was, it was a nice little mo i think what it does more i mean not for the extra but more just so the idea of like okay this is what the security staff actually think of garibaldi he's got there's mm -hmm. some loyalty there it's not all just like you know people who work for him who don't care about him and likewise you've got ivanova because uh, Sinclair basically refuses to take any more orders. He's sick of, like, all this, like, ah, oh, well, I work for the president, and therefore you have to do what I say. He's like, well, you know what? Screw you. It's my station. Uh, blah, blah, blah. And she goes to complain to EarthGov, and Ivana was like, hey, everyone, uh, put some uh, some maintenance on those uh, communication channels. Mm -hmm. But but Lieutenant Commander, that'll, 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 like, clog them up for, like, seven or eight hours. Like, yeah. Oh, darn. oh that's a shame. <laughs> I think it will. Yeah, because she's quite uh, sassy later on. Because uh, she is so much sass. Cause, I love cause, it. Because Kenner calls her up, and he's like, "Hey, why, why are all the communication channels down? Uh, oh, there's maintenance. Like, I demand you open one immediately." He's like, "I am a lieutenant commander of EarthGov. You will not demand anything. You can request something, and I will take it under advisement." He's like, "Well, in that case, I request a channel be open. Request, request denied." denied. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got, I got me good. That was a good chuckle. <laughs> it was good. That was a good chuckle. Uh, oh, I, uh, she does do that that really smug smile at the end of it. Where mm. ugh, I hate that. I hate <laughs> it when people do that to me. It hasn't happened very often, but each time it like turns my stomach upside down. The request denied. Yeah, yeah. That was actually a really good, uh, good implementation of it. Um, <laughs> but she's a Vanova, so we like her doing it. Um, we do. Yeah. She, she bet, also. Yeah. Well, she grew up in Russia. They yeah. She compliments. Ways. She compliments Garibaldi at the start of the episode because he's cynical about the government. He's like, ah, questioning the government, yes. Very Russian of you, Garibaldi. I approve. I don't know that that is a Russian thing, but... Well, not yet. <laughs> yeah, in the future. Future, <laughs> the future Russia will question its government. It's 2258, all right? And <laughs> yeah, you're right. And, and Putin's stepping down. Things might be changing soon. <laughs> like, that's, that's possible. He's stepping down. I would think he'd have to be poisoned or something to leave. Um, Even then, he'll probably just be deformed and live somehow. I saw it in passing. I don't know if it's like it's still in rumor territory or if it's just uh, whatever. But like, I, I did. I, I vaguely remember seeing that like a couple of weeks ago. It was the same week of the election. It was like around the same time. I was like, oh, what's all this good news this week? Oh, what's happening? I imagine <laughs> I would have heard it by now if it was a couple of weeks ago. You would think so. You would think so. Um, 
But we, I think we do have to mention that obviously the effects, the, the exterior CG is always pretty ropey on this show. Um, mm-hmm. They tried to do a bit more with it at the start of this episode, and it did feel quite rough. Um, mm-hmm. You know, the, the, the ast- you know, not the astronaut, but you know, the maintenance guy who, who sort of becomes the ex- an astronaut. Yeah, he becomes an astronaut when the explosion goes off. But he's outside the ship, or outside the station, rather, and he ends up flying away. But even when he's working on the things, he's, he's still, like, CG. Or, or even when, uh... The scene we we're talking about with Ivanov and Garibaldi, they're in, like, the, the transport train tube thing. And mm-hmm. they're up against the window, so behind them it's all green screen, which is fine. That part, The fact that it's green screen is okay. But the actual, like, digital effect of this, like, tunnel way looks so plain and like yeah i'm glad they don't have like the 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 seat like the roller coaster yes cages come down (laughs) yeah it's like from the uh the gathering i never liked that effect yeah it's way more subway looking now like yeah it looks like a metro yeah which which, uh, it makes more sense Uh, that's one of those things they clearly just change their minds on after the gathering it just looks so silly (laughs) yeah i I guess it's also like what they do this every time they have to transport around the station like is it really that that rough <laughs> i imagine it's, it's not good for certain aliens with large heads also mm, like those true. things are are definitely made for humans actually that's something else I pre- I, i'm sure i'm sure this is a nice little trick because they get to reuse a lot of the same set and pretend it's somewhere else but i kind of like that we got a little chase sequence uh, after he's with the prey and mattis he gets chased by some security officers through the alien section but it's all because they're pumping all this atmosphere into it it looks really different and I'm sure it's all the same hallways that we normally see outside of the, you know, med bay or outside of, you know, various quarters. Yeah. But, it, you know, it was a, I thought it was an inventive way of, A, feeling like a different part of the ship, but also, oh, hey, they, they get to reuse a lot of set here without us noticing, because it just looks so different. I'm trying to see if he has a name. The oh, Graf. The, the Mantis? Yes, my favorite character. The best character in Babylon 5. So he does have a name? Yeah, Negrath. Negrath. N- yeah, N, comma... Uh, apostrophe yeah apostrophe <laughs> g-r-a-t-h <laughs> i mean some people might refer Edit to that it. part out so that i sound better i mean it can be referred to as an inverted comma so it's not that <laughs> silly it's been a while since school <laughs> it's okay no one's gonna judge no one's gonna judge um yeah right <laughs> yeah I, I think it says something that we've just sat and talked about a lot of elements of this episode that we still quite like but i don't think it's overall like a great episode honestly i thought i thought it was okay like there's enough in there i'm not bored when i watch it and yeah, that's it's, fair. It, it, it's a little convenient that another character has come on board that knows somebody has history with somebody that storyline is not the best and like you said the actress like she's all right <laughs> i did look her up she hasn't really done anything else mm. I, I don't even that want to blame her per se it could just be that the, the character was written very one note and she's she doesn't quite have the the theater like delivery that a lot of the villains and stuff that have had in this show that really make it all sing and give it a bit more of a, a gravitas yeah um, so they can't there- all be in the graph yeah, and, and every time they like bring up the backstory and like Gary Bond's like, hey, I'd have taken the place of your father if I could have. Like every time they start talking about it, it just feels really forced to me. So, so I guess what I'm saying is, is that their plot, their backstory plot, when it comes up, specifically between them, not so much when like Gary Bond's telling the story, it's unclear, but mm-hmm. it always feels like kind of just a little bit forced melodrama. I really, I really like some of the unintentional comedy though of the like Garibaldi trying to escape and just. Like the, a shot in the misty hallway, and then he just like comes in from the ceiling like Batman. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Garibaldi, Batman's out of a scene. Uh, there's a scene yes, in the middle of this where he does. He, he ends he up in a, a Batman. Yeah, he ends up in a fight with three aliens, including the one that he tried to like pick a fight with earlier for the mugging. Yeah, the tattoo face yeah. one. And he's fighting Tim, and he's doing okay on one on one. But then two of the aliens buddy shop, and it's like three on one. And he's getting the shit kicked out of him. And, you know, Sinclair just happens to find him in time when he comes down. So they're back to back fighting, brothers in arms, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. And Sinclair tries to convince, like, hey, you need to come with me. You need to come with me, Michael. You need to come with me now. And then he answers a, a call on his comms, on his, you know, they've got the, the communicators on their on their hands. And he turns around and Garibaldi's just gone. And I'm like, he just Batman! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's some good moments like that. Um, Oh, it was another thing I liked. 
Oh, I love like the unintentional comedy. This is not any fault of the show, but sure. like when when Garibaldi comes in and he sees Liana for the first time, and he like she kind of just stands up, looks straight ahead, not at him, but away from him, and says his name. It just reminds me of like Sally and Don from Third Rock for their <laughs> Don went into a room. Don. <laughs> she has the exact same delivery. <laughs> anyway. Uh, how did we watch Third Rock from the Sun is what I'm taking from that comment. <laughs> it's been too long. It's on Tubi right now. Yeah, because um, yeah, the end of the episode is like they're kind of like like uh, Kenner finally lets her hair down not that that was like a plot point but her hair's like tied up all episode but now we know she's not so uptight anymore yeah so now her hair's flowing at the end uh, which oh, we should mention I suppose they foiled the plot because there's more bombs at the uh, the base the president's ship's coming in so and uh, home guard have like rigged all these places and because like the the bad guy's the one checking them all under the guise of being you know part of the security force uh, Gara was like hey you're the head of this security detail. Why don't you check it yourself? There's no harm in you checking it just to make sure. Uh, so they go and check and he pulls a gun on her, you know, shocks her with a baton thing. Uh, as a bit of a fight. And that's the end of the action kind of plot, if you will. But mm -hmm. the actual final goodbye is, you know, her leaving. Like, oh, I'm going, you know, next president's next location kind of thing. Um, I'll see you when I, I get back. I think it's a little bit strange that... Um, so the guy that died in the beginning who uh, said Garibaldi was at fault... Mm -hmm. He do you, do you think it's strange if he was part of Home Guard that he wouldn't blame an alien for the bombing? Yeah, I, I think if it was just left to him, that would make sense. The reason why it strategically, it's strategic, assuming it was planned to sort of frame him from the start, and it, you would suggest it was because they transferred money to his account and there was a lot of like pieces in place to frame him. I, I think the point of that is because taking him out of the role of head of security makes their job easier to do what they're going to do. Yeah. I guess. I mean, they, they frame, like, Centauri, like, being able to bribe him. Mm. So I guess there is still some, like, xenophobia going on there. Yeah, And still, you're right, he is the head yeah. of security. It does make sense. It's just, um, it's just, if you plan a bomb and you want to blame <laughs> oh. a certain group of <laughs> aliens, why not <laughs> blame an alien? Yeah, I, like I say, I think it's because he's the head of security and it's like it's more of a strategic thing. But like you said, uh, they're trying to still kind of blame the Centauri as the motivation behind it. So I guess that kind of still links in with what they're overall mm. doing. So uh, I think it works well enough. Um, I just uh, what I was gonna say about the final scene though is is goodbye. That's kind of, it makes a bit of a monologue here about life and being human and because she she tries to apologize for like you know putting him through shit and she shouldn't have done that. He's like, hey, hamster all of us. You know, all of this. And I, I don't remember the whole thing he says because it was just, uh, honestly, it was melodramatic nonsense for the most part. But it gets to the end and it's it kind of says, like, that's what makes us all human. And I, I just, sometimes, like, some of the speeches in the show can be a little on the cheesy side, but you kind of forgive it because the heart's really in the right place. And it's, it's you know, it's, it's doing the, it's kind of doing the, almost that Star Trek thing in a lot of ways where it's trying to, like, sort of get across the kind of All ideal. the souls I've ever met. This was the <laughs> most human. Yes. So... Uh, but he came across as really forced. It didn't really work all that well. It just wasn't one of the show's better attempts at uh, a speech. But she I leaves. also don't think that Jerry Doyle is like the best actor. I think he's. Mm -hmm. I think he's fine for the role he's in, and I. I do think he's super likable. But I don't. I don't think he has like a whole lot of range. At least not from what I've seen so far. That's fair. That's fair. Um. Although I did like his performance when when he takes the first drink of the booze when he's left in the bar with the bottle. I actually thought he's like his reaction to it was I don't know, a little nuanced. If it, it wasn't just I like that he poured like a super big shot and just like one gulp just took the whole thing. Like, damn well, he was a drinker, or he currently is, like the actual actor. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think to not get drunk on set, I imagine it's not actually but it's, it's typical. No, I know, done. but like even to drink water like that would be rough. <laughs> it takes training. Uh yeah, maybe they'll just try to show that he you know, that he was a hard hitting drinker. Like <laughs> this, this was a shot to him. I actually kinda loved that the glasses got this weird kind of like middle handle thing. It's, it's like mm -hmm. uh it looks like a, it looks like some sort of like test tube or something that you'd use in a It's just a space set. shot glass. That's I, all. Exactly, yes. Yeah. Uh, one of those little details uh, that I could appreciate. Uh not bad though. I mean I, I think, you know, 
some important Garibaldi stuff, some nice beats for all the other characters sticking up for him. So it's nice when, you know, Sinclair gives him his badge back and his gun back and he's like, hey, you need these and you did good, Michael, and yeah, yeah. Uh, Franklin being a bit of a dick and, uh, look, you know, letting Sinclair know, ah, a couple of days he'll be ready for duty. He's like, hey, Doc, I could have had a week off with these injuries. <laughs> <laughs> you know, do I get a favor? Yeah, but, that was funny. Yeah, yeah, just those little moments. And it keeps the uh, bubbling politics of the show with Home Guard and the, the xenophobia and all those things ticking over. Um, you think it's odd that the that um and I've already said that said, sentence, but um do you think it's strange that he's the only one that goes by Mr. Like no one says Miss Ivanova <laughs> but everybody says Mr. Garibaldi. Like Mr. is just part of his name. Yeah, I, I don't think that's like a position thing. I think that's more like it's it's weird to say that Mister Garib- yeah it's weird to say Mister Garibaldi's kind of like a nickname because obviously Garibaldi's name and technically people in some context would say Mister Garibaldi but it kind of feels like that's become the, just the way people talk to him except Sinclair Sinclair always calls him Michael or mm. yeah well or he Mike. calls him Mister Garibaldi when he's talking to Ivanova true true he does yes but when he's talking to him directly it's, whereas of course you know. Uh, Londo, even when he's talking straight to him, he's like, Mr. Garibaldi! You know? <laughs> Everybody calls him that. Yeah. Because um, it sounds better. Mr. Sinclair. <laughs> no, it doesn't it doesn't work. No. no. I just call him Commander. I mean, sometimes they might say Commander Sinclair, but typically they'll just say Commander. Yeah. Uh, Jacquard, I feel like, is the one who draws it out the most. He's like, Ah, Commander Sinclair! Mm-hmm. What is the meaning of this? We're next to these aliens. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I, you know, it's a testament to the show that all these characters are really, I think, growing on me. All, all the main main group, they're all super endearing, mm-hmm. I think, in different ways. So, yeah, good. Uh, so, and actually, we're wrapping up here, but I think it's worth mentioning is that one of the things that Garibaldi and Ivanova talk about at the start of the episode is that, uh, you know, I think Ivanova says, "Hey, at least you know, because of this visit, we're getting some new uh, fighter planes or something, or new fighter, you know." whatever they call them. Um, and Garibaldi mentions, oh, we should have had those two years ago. And the, the, the conversation continues and they mention that, yeah, and and we have like two, like, you know, decks or cargo areas for them, launch pads, whatever, and they're under-maintained and we have a crew that's overworked yeah. and doesn't have the resources to actually, you know, you know, maintain them properly. Right, because think- when, the, when the bomb first goes off, Garibaldi doesn't suspect foul play he says well they probably made a mistake because they're tired because they're overworked so much and i think what's really neat about that and this is just hindsight because i because i remember what the next episode is but the next episode is actually about workers on the station i don't know if it's specifically workers who work in that section but it is about like the the you know the the workers like a union yeah yeah, it's a union episode um and i i just because i knew that going into this episode when they talked about that at the start I was like oh that's actually a neat little bit of setting up the mood for the next one like just this idea that they're under the staff on the station are underpaid they're underworked or they're overworked rather not underworked mm-hmm. underworked would be great <laughs> but overworked like you know so I, I like that I like the the, the the teasing and it's not even it doesn't, it doesn't feel like a tease when you're watching it but watching this no, knowing what no. the next one is it's like oh that's a nice little bit of world setting up for the next one yeah there's a lot of little details like even the the characters in the background who normally would be going like rapple 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 yeah or something um they all have dialogue and all the like if you watch with subtitles you can get a glimpse of the dialogue you're like oh that's relative to an episode we saw like two weeks ago or uh, an episode coming up yeah uh it's really, it's really good. It's, it's a good attention to detail, which I think mm-hmm. uh, I appreciate. Even and if you don't catch all of it. After that is the most important episode of the whole series. Season. Series. Oh, not the whole series. It's the only one with Gary Graham in it, the greatest actor oh. of all time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yes, Gary Graham's coming up. Two episodes time. Look forward to it, people. Um, I've been counting. <laughs> <laughs> well that's been episode 11 of Babylon 5 let us know what you think of this one in the comments below uh, you can like and subscribe all that stuff liking is super important uh, it is the free and easy way to support us but if you want to support us with some monies how can they do that Tara? Uh, why well, you can check out our Patreon page it's patreon.com slash TV. and if you donate as well as $1 per month you will get access to bonus episodes of other shows we do including the Ace the Atomic Cinema Experiment which is our science fiction movie review show. And if you donate $5 per month, you will get access to shows early, including Babylon 5. 
one week early. Thank you. Excellent. Otherwise, catch us on Twitter at mild underscore fuzz for channel updates. But that is us, so thank you once again for watching or listening. We always appreciate it. Keep watching Babylon 5, just don't give away the home world. <laughs>